so let me discuss the drugs which are used in the treatment of hypertension now before going into hypertension let me discuss what exactly you mean by blood pressure right let me discuss what exactly you mean by blood pressure if you take the blood pressure blood pressure is given by the formula cardiac output into peripheral resistance so these two together constitutes the blood pressure that is the product of cardiac output and total peripheral resistance will be your blood pressure now if you take the we will take up the individual components now you take the cardiac output now if you take the cardiac output cardiac output is dependent on the total blood volume and as well as the heart rate and as well as the heart rate so it is dependent on these two functions that is the total blood volume and as well as the heart rate and as well as even the pumping function of the heart and as well as the pumping function of the heart so these three things will decide the cardiac output now as such if you take the cardiac output the cardiac output is given by the formula heart rate into stroke volume right cardiac output is given by the formula heart rate into stroke volume so you take this particular heart rate so one component on which the cardiac output is dependent is on the heart rate and you take the stroke volume now what do you mean by this word stroke volume remember stroke volume is the amount of blood which is being ejected out of the heart in single beat is called as stroke volume all right so now this particular stroke volume it is dependent on the total blood volume and as well as the pumping function of the heart so if the amount of blood which is present in the heart if it is more the stroke volume is also more if the contractile capacity of the heart if it is increased then also the stroke volume increases so in a simpler way blood pressure is given by the formula cardiac output into peripheral resistance whereas cardiac output is dependent on the total blood volume heart rate and pumping function that is cardiac output is equal to heart rate into stroke volume stroke volume it is the amount of blood which is ejected out of the heart in single beat is called as the stroke volume whereas you take this particular peripheral resistance now peripheral resistance is determined by the diameter of the arterioles that is so if you take the peripheral resistance so this is the diameter of a blood vessel right this is the diameter of a blood vessel now within this blood vessel there will be a column of blood which is passing through all right now this particular column of the blood will exert the pressure on the vessel wall this column of the blood will exert the pressure on the vessel wall actually the definition of the blood pressure is it is the pressure which is exerted by moving column of the blood on the wall of the vessel is called as blood pressure now when the column of the blood is exerting the pressure on the vessel wall similar way the vessel wall also exert the pressure on the moving column of the blood so the pressure which is exerted by the wall of the vessel on the moving column of the blood that is called as the total peripheral resistance that is called as total peripheral resistance so always remember peripheral resistance is determined by diameter of the arterioles right so if the diameter of the arterioles if it is more the total peripheral resistance will be less whereas if the diameter of the arterioles is reduced then the total peripheral resistance is increased so total peripheral resistance and as well as diameter of the vessel both are inversely related to one another in another way round if total peripheral resistance increases the blood pressure increases all right 
if total peripheral resistance increases the blood pressure increases in another way round if the diameter of the vessel wall if it is reduced total peripheral resistance increases when total peripheral resistance increases the blood pressure also increases so remember blood pressure is being managed by all these variables that is if the cardiac output is increased the blood pressure increases if peripheral resistance increases the blood pressure of an individual increases or you take the sub components of the cardiac output if the heart rate increases the cardiac output increases and then the blood pressure increases if the stroke volume increases the cardiac output increases and then the blood pressure of the individual increases so these are the variables which will determine the blood pressure of an individual now so this is the basic definition of the blood pressure the another important thing is we have what is called as the autonomic nervous system in our body right we have what is called autonomic nervous system in our body this particular autonomic nervous system it constitutes two things one it constitutes the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system right it constitutes the parasympathetic nervous system and as well as sympathetic nervous system all right now the sympathetic nervous system this will influence right this will influence the blood pressure of the individual right sympathetic nervous system will influence the blood pressure of the individual now let me discuss how this particular sympathetic nervous system will influence the blood pressure of an individual so if we take the sympathetic nervous system remember the neurotransmitters of the sympathetic nervous system is epinephrine and as well as norepinephrine so the sympathetic nervous system will have the effect over the blood pressure of the individual the neurotransmitters of the sympathetic nervous system is epinephrine and as well as norepinephrine now this particular epinephrine and as well as norepinephrine it acts via alpha receptors and as well as the beta receptors all right it will act via alpha receptors and as well as beta receptors you take this particular alpha receptors alpha receptors we have that is alpha 1 and as well as alpha 2 receptors whereas if you take the beta receptors like we have the beta 1 then beta 2 and then beta 3 right so the sympathetic nervous system via its neurotransmitters are acting on the various types of alpha and various types of beta receptors now what are those receptors which are concerned or which will regulate the blood pressure of the individual that is your alpha 1 receptors remember alpha 1 receptors they are present on the smooth muscle of blood vessel right alpha 1 receptors they are present on smooth muscle of the blood vessel whereas if you take the beta 1 receptors beta 1 receptors they are present in the heart right beta 1 receptors they are present in the heart they are not only present in the heart this particular beta 1 receptors they are also present in the jg apparatus right they are also present in the jg apparatus so if sympathetic nervous system is stimulated then it will stimulate the alpha 1 receptors and thereby there will be vasoconstriction of the blood vessel all right there will be vasoconstriction of the blood vessel whereas if beta 1 receptors are stimulated what will happen is the heart rate of the individual increases and not only that when beta 1 receptors are stimulated there is also activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system right when beta 1 receptors in the jg apparatus are stimulated there is also activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system is that clear now so you see now 
when sympathetic nervous system is stimulated the blood pressure of the individual is increased either by acting on alpha 1 receptors or by acting on the beta 1 receptors so remember now all these factors like what are all those factors like for example cardiac output or your heart rate stroke volume peripheral resistance and sympathetic nervous system all these factors will regulate the blood pressure of the individual so if sympathetic nervous system is excessively stimulated there is increase in blood pressure if cardiac output is increased excessively there is increase in blood pressure if total peripheral resistance increases excessively there is increase in blood pressure so all these factors will regulate the blood pressure of the individual now so based on this particular various factors the entire antihypertensives they are classified into four main groups